Hello, my name is uh, Jakob Pietroson, and I'll be talking about how we can synthesize uh, human-friendly strategies in board games. So this presentation is based on an article made by me and uh, Thomas Bolanda from uh, the Technical University of Denmark. So the motivation was that even in games that are solved, uh, human players often uh, have a hard time uh, learning how to play optimally. An example is from uh, Connect 4, where uh, the game is solved, but it's often really hard to learn uh, how to be good at the game. And the solution in itself is simply a uh, like a vast uh, collection of mappings from uh, states to actions, and it doesn't really help uh, humans understand uh, why it's solution, why it is a solution in any anyway. Uh, so that's why we want to see uh, see if we can generate uh, strategies uh, in a compact format that's easy to understand. So we got inspired by uh, fast and frugal trees. So a fast and frugal decision tree, uh, also called FFT, um, is a way for, uh, is used for uh, humans to uh, make a decision about something. So an example, uh, as we have here, is let's say we want to make a decision uh, about whether or not we allow visitors at a retirement home during the corona crisis. So we ask a person, do you have a fever? And if the answer is yes, then this person can't visit. Otherwise, we go next to the, go to the next question, and the next question, and so forth. Um, and then, uh, so basically, a fuss, of, fuss and frugal tree is a tree where uh, there's always only two children of any node, and at least one of the nodes is a terminal node. Uh, and it's been proven that the uh, fast and frugal, frugal tree uh, resembles uh, human decision making and it's easy to memorize. Uh, so this is why we wanted to use uh, fast and frugal trees as a uh, representation for uh, how we wanted to make our optimal strategies. Uh, it's also just equivalent to a nested if else statement. Um, the idea of representing uh, strategies in this way is not entirely novel. For instance, if, we, if you go to the Wikipedia page of uh, Tic-Tac-Toe, you'll stumble upon this uh, winning strategy made by Simon O'Neill in 1972. And this has been manually constructed, um, and it's basically just uh, an FFT uh, in the form of a list of prioritized rules. So you choose the first available move. The first move is uh, place three in a row. And if you can't do that, then you go to the next one, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, so this is kind of what we wanted to, our strategies to look like. Um, so for the presentation, I'll start with uh, talking about how we model games and strategies, and then I'll uh, talk about how we can synthesize optimal strategies, uh, move on to results and discussion, future work, and then lastly, I'll show uh, how our tool works in practice in a demo. So we can describe games as uh, state transition systems over a finite set of atoms, where a, a certain state is uh, just a subset of these atoms. And then if we take an example from tic-tac-toe, where uh, a cross in the top right uh, top left corner sorry, can be uh, expressed as uh, with the atom uh, player one, zero comma zero, meaning that there is a piece, uh, the player one has a piece at zero comma zero. And then similarly, we can do that for the uh, remaining pieces on the board. And then a strategic rule can be expressed uh, using a precondition with, which is a conjunction of uh, literals, and then an action, which is a description of how the game changes. And then a rule applies to a state if the uh, precondition is met and the action is a legal action. So another example from tic-tac-toe, as we see here, we have this state, and then the action in this case is the blue node right here, uh, which we can express as uh, plus player two, two comma two, meaning that we put a node at position two comma two. Um, and then given this state, we can construct a, what we call a basic strategic rule using the uh, literals from the uh, state. So a rule uh, can be simplified by deleting literals from the precondition. And then what happens when we simplify a rule is that it generally uh, applies to more states. So let's take an example from the rule uh, we saw previously. This rule only applies to a single state, which is the state we see here. But if we uh, decide to delete some of the preconditions, it'll start to apply to uh, even more states. So now it'll apply to these two, and then we can delete even more preconditions, uh, and it'll apply to more states uh, as so. Um, and it's important to uh, say that uh, a simplified rule can easily be part of a optimal strategy. So this is kind of the foundation of how 
uh, we want our rules to uh, look like in our optimal strategies. So um, I talked about FFTs. So the way we're going to um, represent FFTs logically is through a sequence of these strategic rules. Um, and an FFT is basically, uh, basically induces a strategy that is a mapping from uh, states to other states, to transitional states. So uh, the way it does that is that um, in any state, uh, if the FFT applies, then we pick the action specified by the first rule in the FFT that applies. And if it doesn't apply, then we simply uh, take a random action. Um, and let's go through an example of an FFT. So let's say we have an FFT of two rules. The first rule is if P, then Q is made true. And then the other rule is if Q, then R is made true. And then if we um, use this FFT on a state consisting of Q, then we see that uh, the first precondition uh, is not satisfied because uh, this state doesn't have Q. Uh, so, but if we look at the second rule, we see that the state does have Q, so it's satisfied, which meaning that Q is added to the, um, the literals of this uh, state. So this is the transitional state of the strategy, uh, if you uh, use the strategy on the state. So an example of a synthesized optimal FFT. Um, so if, as we see here in the box, this is uh, an example of a, an FFT that our program has generated. Um, it consists of uh, six different rules. And this uh, to the left is an example of a uh, state where this uh, strategy applies. So if we take the first rule, for instance, uh, the precondition is that we require a cross at 0, 0,2. But if we look at the state, there is a naught, so it doesn't apply. Uh, but then if we go, and yeah, and we can say the similar similar things happen for R2, or 3 or 4 and a 5 uh, they don't apply. But then if we go to R6, we see that um, uh, the precondition is whether or not there is a naught at 0, 0,2. And in this case, there is, so it applies. And the corresponding action is to put a cross at 0, 0,1. So the way we're going to synthesize the strategies is that we uh, strongly solve the game in order to get information about all the uh, optimal actions in all the uh, states. So we do this using Minimax. Um, and then when we have the solution, we can very easily uh, construct an optimal FFT simply by taking all the state action paths from the solution and then converting them to uh, these uh, basic strategic rules and inserting them in one big FFT. But of course, this FFT will be just as long as the solution itself, so it doesn't really uh, gain, give us anything at all to work with. Uh, but then the thing is, is we can choose to uh, simplify optimal strategies, uh, either by uh, deleting rules or simplifying rules. Um, and any time we uh, make a simplification, we need to verify that the simplification uh, of this strategy is valid, meaning that the strategy is still optimal after this simplification. Um, and what happens is that whenever we simplify rules, uh, later rules can be made obsolete. So let's take an example of that. So let's say we have the rule RI, which is uh, if P1 and P2, then we perform the action A1. And then we have another rule RJ, which is if P1, then we perform the action A2. So if we decide to simplify RI by removing P2, then uh, RJ is made obsolete. Uh, so let, let's just assume A1 is always legal. Then it'll be the case that for any state where Rj applies, then Ri will also apply. And since Ri comes before Rj, then Rj is entirely useless. So we can simply delete Rj without any uh, effects on the strategy whatsoever. So the way we're going to verify that a strategy is optimal uh, <clears throat> is that it returns optimal actions in all the reachable states. So um, this is kind of like a standard um, notion of uh, optimality and a standard notion of what we uh, like determine as reachable. So basically, uh, from the initial state, uh, let's say the FFT applies, then we choose the corresponding action. And then when it's the opponent's turn, we simply choose all legal, legal actions. So and if in any of these reachable states, we choose a suboptimal action, then the strategy is suboptimal. Um, so the way we're going to, uh, yeah, so let's talk about the naive way of synthesizing a strategy. So if we solve the game using Minimax, um, 
Then we can convert all the state action paths from the solution to basic rules, insert them in an FFT, and then we can start simplifying until no more valid simplifications can be made. This is kind of like a naive way to go about it, but the problem is that if we do this, we'll end up adding a lot of these basic strategic rules that we'll later have to uh, delete again, or we can delete again. Um, and for every time we delete a rule, we need to make a simple uh, verification. And every time we meet, uh, need to make a verification, that's gonna take a lot of time. Um, so it's not uh, particularly fast, uh, this approach. So instead, what we wanna do is we want to build the strategy iteratively, uh, starting from the empty strat strategy. So basically, every time we add a rule to, a, uh, to our strategy, we simplify it right away. Um, and then we only make rules if the corresponding state action pair, uh, if the state from the state action pair isn't applied to already by the strategy. And also we don't want to add uh, rules made from state actions pass if all legal actions are optimal either. Um, but then another question arises and that is how do we check if a, a certain simplification is valid in a strategy that's not yet optimal. Um, and for that we, um, came up with the notion of optimally reachable states. So uh, an opt optimally reachable states following an FFT is defined as um, if the FFT applies to a state, then we uh, follow that, um, the corresponding action. And if it doesn't apply, then we choose all optimal actions. And the whole idea is that in this way, we'll be able to compute all the potentially reachable states. Um, and in that sense, we'll be able to determine whether uh, an FFT is what we call weakly optimal. Uh, and an FFT is then weakly optimal if it outputs optimal act actions in all the optimally reachable states. Um, so an example is, let's say we have the empty strategy, then that'll be weakly optimal because it doesn't apply to any states at all. Um, and even if we add just a single rule uh, that applies to a single state with an optimal action, it'll still be weakly optimal. But if we start to simplify this rule, such that it in any of these reachable states performs suboptimal actions, then the strategy, strategy will no longer be weakly optimal. So it's kind of used for building up strategies in that sense. All right. So um, let's talk about uh, how the reachable states are, uh, can be pruned when we simplify rules. Um, so let's take this as an example where we have an FFT consisting of uh, two different rules, and the f uh, R1 and R2. Um, and let's try to simplify these rules. Um, so if we take R1, and if we delete, uh, if we try to delete Q from the precondition of R1, then we'll see that R1 applies to state th S3 here uh, with a suboptimal action. So we, we're not able to uh, delete Q from the preconditions of R1. And similarly, if we do this for P, we'll have the same result. Uh, so we can conclude that right now, as, as it is right now, uh, R1 has no valid simplifications. Then uh, if we look at R2, we can uh, delete Y, and R2 will then apply to the initial state um, with the action B. And this results in over oh, half of the reachable states, optimally reachable states being deleted. Uh, and as a result, uh, R1 can actually now be uh, simplified by deleting Q because R3, uh, S3 sorry, is no longer reachable. So we don't need to consider whether or not this is, um, like we don't need to consider whether or not um, R1 outputs uh, optimal actions in this state. Okay, so let's move on to uh, how we synthesize uh, these optimal strategies as it is now. So we start by solving the game using Minimax and then for all the state action paths in the solution, uh, we convert them to uh, to rules if the strategy doesn't apply, and if not all legal actions are optimal. And then we add the rule to the FFT and simplify it until we can't simplify it anymore. And then lastly, we end up uh, minimizing uh, minimizing the FFT um, as much as we possibly can. So the, the results of this is that we can synthesize uh, short optimal strategies in a reasonable time slot for games like Tic-Tac-Toe, a Sim, a Nim, and so on and so forth. And it also works for general game playing. Uh, we can synthesize, uh, you know, just having a GDL file is enough for us to be able to synthesize an optimal strategy. Uh, and then we also uh, discovered that we uh, can actually reduce this uh, manually crafted optimal strategy from Simon and Newell. 
Um, so what we see here is that we, the way we did this is that we took the strategy and then we converted it to the logical format that we uh, described earlier. And then we minimized it as much as we uh, could. And we saw that actually rule number six and eight is redundant. So they are not, uh, they're not needed in order to play optimally. Uh, this is a quite uh, interesting observation. Um, but yeah, uh, then for future works, um, what we want to try to work with is we want to optimize the algorithm in order to be able to support synthesizing optimal strategies for uh, larger games, such as uh, four in a row, uh, nine minus Morris, and so on. And then we also want to add support for uh, rules in predicate logic uh, in order to be able to um, like compress our FFTs even further. Um, but yeah, let's go on uh, to the demo. And I'll show you how um, that one looks like. So uh, yeah, so this is a demo, and we can uh, we can try to add a rule, for instance, like this. And then we have a tic tac toe board here, and we can try to uh, to some of the uh, oh, just a moment. We try to choose some of the uh, different. Uh, so here we have an action. So now we have made a rule consisting of uh, two preconditions and a single action. So we simply put a cross in the middle if uh, there's a cross to the left and right. And then we can verify if this strategy is uh, optimal. So we can press the verification button. And uh, if we go like this, we'll see that uh, this is uh, the first state we, are, we encounter where the strategy is not optimal. And it's not optimal because this is an example of a state where we, uh, that the strategy doesn't cover. So um, then we can choose to add this, uh, add this rule to the strategy. And now we'll have uh, two rules in our strategy instead. Um, what we can also do is we can uh, synthesize. So if we go ahead and delete these, then we can synthesize uh, an optimal strategy uh, from the scratch, right? So we press the synthesize button. And as a result, we, have, we now have our strategy in tic-tac-toe consisting of uh, seven rules, an optimal strategy, and we can see uh, each of the different rules, you know, what they look like. Uh, for instance, here, this one says that we put a cross up here, if there's a cross in the bottom, and so on and so forth. So this makes it really easy for uh, human players to follow. You just need to, to uh, look at each rule, you know, in a prioritized list, and uh, you'll be able to play optimally for uh, tic-tac-toe. So, but anyway, um, that's all I had for this uh, presentation. I hope you, uh, I hope you liked it. I hope you uh, learned something about uh, generating optimal strategies in board games. And uh, yeah, thank you.